Welcome to the August edition of Around Town, a news magazine program produced by the town of Garner. I'm your host, Rick Mercer. We have another very informative program for you this month. First off, we're going to take a look at a new program by the Garner Police Department that uses mapping and data information to help the police department more effectively deploy their resources. Let's take a look. So the background on this program and this position is that uh, we have been longtime partners with the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program, uh, which is based here out of Raleigh, and we've done a number of initiatives with them uh, and some grant funding in the past with them that's aimed towards different traffic safety initiatives. Um, so DDACS is one of the more recent programs that they've been working with NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, to spread the DDACS program in law enforcement. Uh, so there was some grant funding available and we ultimately, uh, with support of the town council, were able to partner with Nightdale and Holly Springs to get a position funded that is shared between the three departments to begin to work towards implementation of DDACS uh, to enhance our existing traffic safety program. It does not mean any additional resources on patrol. Um, we have hired a crime analyst um, who has uh, a good experience and background in this area and she has come on board and is doing a great job in terms of looking at statistical data and helping guide us in the program. Um, but what we're trying to do is rather than use more resources is use the ones that we have more efficiently and more effectively. Um, because certainly in today's day and age, you want to always get the best bang you can out of your buck, if you will, um, with the budgets the way they are. So what this means is trying to look at where is the crime, where are the traffic violations occurring, and can we have our officers, as they have that proactive time available for enforcement, among other things, to be specifically in those areas, sometimes even at specific times of the day, specific days of the week, um, that are identified as what we refer to as hot spots, or in that case, hot times um, for officers to be present not only to take enforcement action um, but certainly also as a deterrent to crime and to traffic safety violations that ideally will make uh, the community safer and uh, a better place to be. And I certainly appreciate that people could be concerned that this might mean do I have less police in my neighborhood? And that's absolutely not the case. Um, we are certainly not giving up on any area of town. Uh, this is a trial period that does focus on one area, um, but we'll be moving that around over time in the coming months and years to make sure that we continue to track um, where those hot spots are. But it also means that we have other resources that remain committed to our neighborhoods and to the different areas of town uh, for both reactive, i.e. calls for service, but also for proactive enforcement. Um, what we want to do is continue to spread that out as best we can, but make a little better use of some of that additional free time that the officers may have to be proactive by guiding them uh, to a specific location where we think we can have the greatest impact. Well, I think simply put is that criminals don't like blue lights, quite honestly. So that's sort of the, the one-line thesis, if you will, behind DDAX, is that if you can put police in an area where crime may be prevalent or more likely to occur, that's going to do several things. One is it's going to deter people that might otherwise commit crimes if they think that they're more likely to be apprehended. Um, that's one of the best tools we have is to let them see the police and feel like they're not safe to commit crimes. So that's an advantage. And then also having the visibility in those areas in terms of traffic enforcement also tends to help so that we can uh, look at, again, the right times of day, the right type of violations. And we're also going to do that to try to educate not only the public, but also our officers to be looking at, okay, if this intersection is a high crash intersection, why is it a high crash intersection? Is it simply because of the volume of traffic, which is not a stretch for 401 and 70 in that area coming out of Raleigh, um, but are there things related to turn lanes or turn signals or timing of lights, any combination thereof that we might not only use more enforcement, but also work collaboratively with um, the highway department, um, with DOT in terms of making changes that will allow people to be less likely to be in crashes or less likely to commit violations. Our initial plan is for a six month period um, so that we have a meaningful amount of data um, to compare to the previous six months. And at that point, um, we'll be able to consider it on a case-by-case -case basis for this or any other area that we select as to seeing, again, what is the impact? Um, perhaps, you know, do we need to extend it? Have we had the impact we would hope to have? And then again, we don't certainly intend to abandon that area, but we might reduce the presence to focus in other areas as well. 
I don't have specific statistical goals. I think you can, there's good and bad with statistics. I think you can sometimes make that to be whatever you want. What we're hoping to do is to make Garner a safer place to be, um, certainly with the idea that we will see reductions in crashes, reductions in criminal violations over time. But it's important to also recognize that initially you may see a spike in those numbers because of the presence. So the fact that if you're two months into it and your numbers have actually gone up, that doesn't mean that you're not being successful. It means that you're being uh, there more often, you're being more proactive. And then over time, what you would hope is that to see that level of attention maintained and then see the statistics start to drop off. And that would be what we would hope to see in terms of measuring success. Again, I think it's important that the community recognize that it's uh, that we're being proactive in this regard, that again, we're trying to do what we can to be leaders uh, in the profession and certainly in the region. Uh, we appreciate the support of the council and of the Governor's Highway Safety Program that have allowed this program to be started. Um, you know, we've always had these numbers, but we haven't always had the resource that we have in Lauren to be able to educate ourselves about them better, to make better use of those statistics, and to be, again, proactive and ideally more efficient in trying to bring DDACs to Garner to improve quality of life and public safety, and ideally to be a model for other agencies that might then come on board uh, in the future, whether it be in Wake County or anywhere across North Carolina. Uh, DDACs is an acronym. It stands for Data Driven Approaches uh, to Crime and Traffic Safety. Basically, it's an operational model that looks at location based criminal offenses and then location based crash offenses um, to see kind of where they, where they are occurring and if those two areas within the town um, sort of mirror together. And here in Garner, uh, they do. They um, tend to be happening in the same one mile area, which is the area that we've chosen to implement DDACs. Um, DDACs is a way to be more effective and efficient in deploying your police resources to an area that is having a little bit of an issue with an increased crime rate, a lot of traffic crashes, a lot of um, traffic violations, seatbelt violations, things of that nature, speeding. Um, to more effectively use your resources, put them in an area, have a high visibility enforcement action, and see if you can help reduce the crime or reduce social harms for the town and make it a, a better place to be. Um, what we've done here in Garner is we've done a historical analysis. We looked at data from 2009 through 2011 to sort of see what the crime trends here were, uh, what's been going on over the past few years to see if it's sort of been in the same general area, the same type of crimes, if we've seen any spike in one particular type of crime that we needed to focus on. And through that analysis, one area of the town, which is sort of the split Highway 70, 401, Fayetteville Road area, um, sort of developed itself as a hot spot is, is the term that we like to use. Um, over 25% of the town's criminal offenses occurred in the one mile general area that falls there um, and over about 35 percent of our traffic crashes in the town all occurred within this one area. So that really is what influenced picking that area and identifying it as an area that we wanted to implement DDACs and give it, give it a go to see if we can make an impact, make it maybe a little bit safer as far as uh, people commuting through the area, if we can reduce the number of um, crash activity and if we could also reduce the number of criminal offenses that reported just to make um, people feel a little safer, make it feel like a, a cleaner area, a better area. A majority of the criminal offenses that are occurring in that general area are what we would consider property crimes. Um, larcenies would fall into that category, maybe some vandalism. Um, there isn't, there isn't a lot of violent crime. We don't see robberies. We don't see aggravated assaults and things of that nature. So mainly what we're trying to combat in that area is larceny, shopliftings, um, people who might leave their car unlocked in a, a busy commercial parking lot and someone sees something that appeals to them and they go in and they remove it. Um, calls of that nature. And those are the things that we're really trying to deter from occurring here in the town of Garner. And that is, um, that's a big, big factor in why we chose the DDAX area. You can learn more about the DDAX program by going to garnernc.gov and going to the police department's main page. 
There you can find maps and data that relate to the new program. Next up, we have the Mayor's Great People and Garner segment. This month, Mayor Ronnie Williams interviews the 2012 Miss North Carolina, Garner's own Arlie Honeycutt. It is yet another great day in Garner. Hello, I'm Garner Mayor Ronnie Williams. We're here today in the green room at the Garner Performing Arts Center doing another installment of our segment we call Great People in Garner. With us today, I'm very honored, very proud to introduce Miss North Carolina Harley Honeycutt. Harley, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your winning the crown. Thank you. First, I guess the question everybody wants to know is, what did it feel like when they announced you as the winner? It was it was absolutely surreal. It was completely crazy. I know that at, at one point I remember looking down at my hands and thinking, okay, you can wake up now. And then I looked up and everyone was still there. And so it was it was completely a crazy. A dream, it was like a dream, wasn't it? It really was. It was insane. <laughs> Harley, you're quite young, but you've been involved in performing arts for a long time. Tell us about that. A lot of it's happened at the Performing Arts Center in Garner. It has, it really has. I, um, I'm i actually about to turn 20 next week and for about 17 of those 20 years, I've been involved in theater here in Garner. And um, I've done a lot of, of work with the town players here at the Garner Performing Arts Center and loved every minute of it. I've grown up around theater and it's been wonderful, absolutely fabulous. And your parents have been a part of uh, being in, the pa uh, not the pageants, but the performances. Yes, yes. My mom is actually the artistic director for the town players and my dad is the technical director. And it's actually really nice having an artistic director and a technical director in your family. And because a family team. That's there we go. Yeah, my, my dad, I can go to him with computer problems and my mom, I can go to her with wardrobe <laughs> issues. So it's perfect. <laughs> and you've been around pageants for quite some time. Yes. When did you start uh, preparing to... Uh, participate in pageants? I actually did the Garner's Outstanding Teen Pageant, when, which is like a, a little sister program to the Miss America system. And I competed in that when I was 14, just did it on a whim, knew there were scholarships involved and there were also going to be a lot of great opportunities to perform for the winner and just did it for fun and kind of got bitten by the bug. <laughs> this may be a strange question, but since being crowned Miss North Carolina, how has your life changed? It's been, it's been a whirlwind of activity since the moment they put the crown on my head. I actually have um, started living in Raleigh. There is a fabulous sponsor that provides an apartment for Miss North Carolina for the year. So I'm right next door in Raleigh right now and just going and going. I, I live there, but I don't do too much you staying stay there. there. <laughs> Lots of appearances all over the state of North Carolina. The Miss America pageants in January. Yes. How are you preparing for that? Well, lots of polishing at this point. Um, you know, there's all of the, the fun things, the shopping, the meeting different people to, to have wardrobe consultations and things like that. But there's also that hard work. I've got a personal trainer trying to get me ready for the swimsuit portion of the competition, you know, polishing interviews and, and really just trying to be the best state title holder I can be and hopefully eventually be the best Miss America I could be. We're, in, we're uh, supporting you platform. Tell us about your platform. Well, my platform is the domino effect, which aims to inspire volunteers on one person at a time. And so I've been doing a lot of work ever since I was Garner's Outstanding Teen. I've been doing volunteer work here in Garner, North Carolina. I started the Henry Sanchez Memorial Scholarship Fund at the GPAC for town players shows, which sends kids to their summer camp every summer by their teens raising funds um, with 
selling concessions during the intermission. And so it was really exciting for me when I went off to college, I'm a student at East Carolina University, to kind of step back and see the kids who had started as scholarship kids move up and start raising funds for the next generation of youngins who want to get involved in this camp. And so it really inspired me to see that, that domino effect. And I joined the East Carolina University Ambassadors when I got to school, which is a volunteer organization, and saw there are so many different ways to get involved. And the key is really to tap into your personal interests and then apply them to make a difference in your community. So that's what I hope to travel around and promote. And I'm glad year. you mentioned East Carolina. You're a student there. Yes. But that has been put on hold for a while. It has. It has. I actually will take a year off this year to do the full-time job of being Miss North Carolina, but I'll return to school with over $16,000 in scholarship next fall. Where do you see yourself in five years? Oh goodness, well hopefully finishing out a master's degree in voice performance, that's what I'm studying right now, and so hopefully hopefully getting that wrapped up with the money that I, I will have gained in scholarships with the Miss North Carolina organization. Okay, let's bump it up another five years. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years, oh my gosh. That's a tough question. It is, oh man. I, I would probably say, um, hopefully at that point, not so much auditioning, 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 but performing, performing, performing. I really do want to continue to perform um, as a voice major, there are lots of options. You can go the classical route, you can go the musical theater route. So hopefully just doing a lot of what I love to do, spending time on stage. Well, everything you do, you do well. Is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know? Just, just thank you to the town of Garner, especially. Everyone has been so wonderful and so supportive in the past few weeks. I, I'm telling you, if you don't know or don't feel like you're loved, all you have to do is go and win Miss North Carolina because holy cow, I, I have been just overwhelmed with the support. So thank you. Thank you and thank you to everyone in Garner who has sent a kind word my way. I so appreciate it. Harley, we, we've started this interview a little bit early. We've got a little time to fill. Would you honor us with a song? Do you feel like singing? I would love to. I would love to. I, I say let's let's do it on the G Pack stage. There's no better place to sing in Garden. That is wonderful. <laughs> we, we'll make a rain. You can carry. I'm right up the road. I'll share your load if you just call me. He is very inspirational because of many things. I come in at 8.11 and he smiles and says, How are you? When he smiles and says, How are you? I can swear my heart grows wings. So today at 8.11, I decided I should meet him. I decided I should meet him in a proper, formal way. So today Oh, 
We said keep the 355 because that triple latte was on him. And that's it for this month's edition of Around Town. Remember, you can watch the show online at GarnerNC.gov on demand. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Rick Mercer.